Hi guys and welcome to this next video. In this video, which I thought was going to be an update to my model kit, for those of you who follow my kit building, you'll know that I'm currently building an ICM uh, Russian T-34-76 early um, Soviet tank and uh, I wasn't aware until earlier today that I was in fact going to be filming something completely different and that something completely different is this latest project um, which is hopefully going to end up being a nice shiny functioning and um, and fun Wager single group espresso machine which I picked up today it has um, it has known faults and uh, and then goodness knows, goodness, goodness only knows what unknown faults I might find along the way. And it's, um, it's been in storage. It's absolutely manky. It's, it's pretty disgusting, to be honest. But it's been in storage in a shed. So obviously it's had the, the temperature, it damp, there's a bit of mold on it and everything. The thing needs a good thorough strip down and clean in addition to the parts that I know it requires, or that I've been told it requires rather. Um, so, as I say, this is going to be a bit of a project for me. I've wanted a nice commercial style or, um, or sort of uh, prosumer unit at the very least for a good while. And while I've gotten good results with the Gadget, I know that it has its limitations so I picked up this and as you can see it's considerably larger and considerably heavier than the Gadget Classic. It's a very solid construction. Wager are a well-known Italian espresso machine manufacturer. Uh, I don't know the model number of this one. I cannot find a serial number. I think it might be an Atlas from Googling Images. They're the sort of ones that are closest to that I can see. But I'm not sure, so I'm going to have to try and do a bit of digging around and see what I can find there. But it's a single boiler heat exchanger unit with a single group head, hot water tap and uh, steam wand. And being a single boiler heat exchanger unit, that means, of course, that you can brew and steam at the same time, which is going to be such a novelty for me because the Gadget Classic doesn't. Um, and not until you get into the sort of single boiler heat exchanger machines of the prosumer market can you actually do that. Now this is actually a commercial, uh, a low use commercial machine and the kind of thing that you might find in a, a small not exceptionally busy cafe that doesn't make many cups of tea a day, which means it will be perfect for my intended use because my typical go-to coffee maker is my Aeropress um, which I have a, a nice cup of uh, Brazilian um, freshly roasted Brazilian uh, beans which I did on Sunday in this cup from the Aeropress and I make maybe one perhaps two lattes a day uh, if I'm in all day sort of on a weekend so Based on that knowledge and looking at this, you might be thinking, hmm, overkill? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the way I look at it is, if people out there can go out there and buy themselves a Mitsubishi Lancer or a Subaru Impreza, and they're the kind of people that have, uh, have difficulty driving fast in anything other than a straight line, then, you know, you can, you can kind of apply the same logic there. So whatever uh but there you go anyway no dig intended i like uh, i like the uh, lancer evo it's um it's a nice looking car i'm not really a car guy but other than model kits but the lancer evo is a lovely looking car so uh, no no dig intended they're just a simile but uh but yes yeah sure it's it's overkill for my needs uh, i'm not going to use it in a commercial basis i'm not going to be serving coffees up for crowds or what have you but it's going to be fun to play with and obviously because it's not a brand spanking new machine and it needs repairing and fixing and working to, to make it work. It means uh, that I didn't pay the typical new price that you would expect for a machine of this caliber, which is something that I couldn't afford to do. And it's a plum only machine, which I'm a little bit annoyed about because the, the guy I bought it from, I did actually ask him if it had a water tank. 
because some, some machines are plumb and or water tank. And he said it did, it turns out it doesn't and it's got a rotary pump. And to my knowledge, there are only a small handful of prosumer machines that will feed from a water tank with a rotary pump because typically it needs line pressure from the tap. Not a huge deal, it just means that I've got to look at plumbing it in. So, you know, I mean, push comes to shove, I can probably get an adapter for short term use where I can connect it to the tap just for uh, testing out and what have you. So not, not a huge deal. Um, the, I need to look into this as well because the power cable is one of the thickest power cables I have ever seen. Um, and it is clearly intended to be wired permanently into the mains. The weight of the machine tells you it's not a portable machine. It's not something that you're gonna pick up and carry around. You put it where you want it, you plumb it in, you plumb the drain for the thing, you plumb the water and you wire this into the mains. Now I'm going to need this on a plug for at least for testing purposes. And because it has more than your typical wires, it's got a black and a gray wire, as well as the, the brown live, the blue neutral and the yellow green earth. I'm not really sure if I just kind of go about ignoring the, the black and grey and wire this up to a plug as normal. But we'll figure that out as we go and see how it goes. But initially I'm going to need to do that just to test the unit. So on the front we've got hot water, we've got steam and then we've got a program stop button here and then four presumably programmable buttons. So we've got single espresso, double espresso and then what I'm assuming is um, is a sort of, it's either a long black or an Americano or something like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that one, but obvious, I'm, a, I'm guessing that these are all programmable. So you can actually program by volume or, or weight or what have you, I don't know. Um, but I'm assuming also that the program stop button uh, can be used as a start stop to express, I don't know yet. I'm gonna to have to try and find a manual on this. On the front, we've got a three-way switch, zero, one, and two. I have no idea what that does, no clue whatsoever. We've got a low, uh, I think that's probably a low water volume warning light, I'm guessing. So if the tank is a little empty, this will light up. And the steam arm with a, an anti-burn rubber and on a ball joint, as you can see there, the hot water is fixed. The group head there, and then we've got the, we've got the um, group handles, two original ones, which are these, the rounded one, and then this one, which is an aftermarket one, uh, but still a very well made one, good solid one. And uh, handily, we've got a single port filter basket, a double port filter basket, and a blanking plate, which is nice as well for back flushing when you run some pulley calf or something through to, to get rid of the gunk that builds up in there. And then down here we've got a gauge and there is clearly something wrong with that because the needles are both pointing to the wrong side of the gauge. But this shows both, um, both the uh, pump pressure and the... What's the other one? Well, pump pressure with the, with the sort of 8, 9, 10 bar green zone at the bottom. And then this other one, which is the boiler pressure, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but um, something along those lines. We'll figure that out as we get to it. Uh, shallow drip tray, because it's intended to be plumbed in. Again, not a huge problem. It's just something that uh, I'll have to factor in. And it will not sit where my Gaja Classic sits because there's simply not enough room and it's too tall to fit underneath the cupboard. So I'm going to have to figure out where to sit this as well. But first thing I need to do is wire in a plug, test and make sure that it actually switches on, lights up and does what it's supposed to do. And then at that point, it's going to be a case of taking lots of photos for to document the procedure, stripping it all down, taking it all apart and giving it a thoroughly good clean. And I'm gonna give you a, a quick tour round up close shortly and you'll see how filthy this thing really is. So I'm gonna give the whole thing a really good clean, hopefully uh, catalog the progress and upload the videos as I do that. Uh, I need to get a new heating element which are in the region of about 50 pounds. Um, that I've been told is, uh, is a fault. It needs a heating element. And then we'll sort of see what else is needed as we go along. So 
So there we are, there's the introduction to my, my new Wager um, single group, single boiler heat exchanger, light use commercial espresso machine. I'm going to have a close up look at the unknown Wager. Um, hopefully I will find out a, a name or a model number or something along those lines. Uh, get an idea of the age and uh, and the model that it is along the way. Hopefully I'll be f I'll find some sort of serial numbers and things as I start to take it apart. There, there may be a plate inside with serial identifiers on because there's nothing on the sides or the rear or underneath that I can see. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, is just uh, give you the measurements for anybody who's interested in the actual size of it. So the height is 18 inches or 46 centimeters. The width at the widest point, which is where the drip tray is at the bottom, is just shy of 21 inches or uh, about 53 centimeters and the depth at its deepest point which is from the back to the front of the drip tray is just shy of 22 inches or 55 and a half 56 centimeters so that's the size of the uh, the machine so um, so it's quite some size for a single group machine as as you can see there and what I'm going to do now is we're going to switch to shaky cam footage and you'll have to bear with me and excuse me uh, with, my, with my um, unsteady handling and, and shaky footage and we're going to have a close up look of the machine. Got a well worn logo on the front of the drip tray because this has been used in a cafe for some time before it developed a fault and then was put into storage and the owners of said cafe uh, just got a replacement machine. You can see the gauge there where the needles are faulted. This top one should be around here, this bottom one should be around here. So I'm not sure that if this has happened just from it being jarred or or what I'm not sure but hopefully I'll be able to get into that and see if I can uh, get into that from the back hopefully and see if I can sort of twiddle these needles and see if I can get them to work. We've got the three-way switch up there with zero, zero, one and two. Now obviously it's the power switch uh, logic would suggest and I'm guessing this light is the power illuminating light. I'm not sure what the one and the two actually signify though however. There's the hot water outlet over here is the steam wand. Oh, let's focus on that for you. So we've got the steam wand with a with a rubber there, and it's a ooh, four or five hole steam wand, I think. Five hole steam wand. There you go. So that should steam um, even quite a large jug very quickly and very nicely indeed. And I'm guessing that that particular thing there is a low water level warning. Um, but I might be wrong on that yet. That's something we've yet to find out. And then of course up there you have um, a pretty grubby and disgusting looking group head and shower screen. Of course this is all going to be taken apart and cleaned but you can see just, just there how kind of grubby looking that is. There's the, I'll just give you the steam and the hot water knob, which are marked sort of as you'd expect. And there's the control panel switches on the front. So that's pretty much it for the front. There's a sticker for presumably who originally supplied this. And that's a Glasgow number. It might be worth, I might give them a ring and see, um, and see if I can find any information from them. Now, I'm not expecting anything um, remarkable information-wise because I suspect this machine is 
15 to 20 years old, something like that. Round the back, uh, I'm not going to show you because uh, it means moving the thing, it weighs a ton and all there is is a, a Wega logo. So what I'm going to do just now is pop out the drip tray and it has a this this tray which if I can now this is the awkward bit this is where this is where I could do with a, cam, uh, a cameraman but uh, we've got a little bit of sort of corrosion in there so that needs a good clean up but you can see it's a shallow drip tray with a drain hole at the back and then this is for your cups to sit on and then this slides out that's where your drain hole is it drains into This here, now you can see this is a disgusting mess. This is really, really, um, this is this is when you get the first impression of how, how um, yeah, it is inside. It's, it's gross, it's pretty damn gross, let me tell you. You can see you've got the water inlet there, solenoid valve here and various bits of pipe works, as, but, uh, some kind of temperature sensor, um, a Y piece here, which is all obviously part of the drainage system and uh, feedback and what have you. Um, the drain pipe comes out, I believe, out of the back here through this hole. And then we've got various electrical switches and bits and pieces. And then if we move up to the top, and I take this one off, I'll just sit that out of the way. And now you can really see how gross this is. I've just got myself some step ladders to stand on, so um, it's a good job uh, I do my own risk assessments and health and safety, because uh, if, if this were a professional studio, I think everyone would be having a fit at me. You can see how disgusting this, this thing is. I mean, this, this is all mould and mildew from its sitting. There's bits of residue, uh, bits of goodness of coffee and goodness only knows what. Um, hopefully these electrics are going to be okay because this uh, this is a sort of ribbon cable and it's, it's caked with mildewy stuff so I'm going to have to clean all this and I'm really really hoping that this switch panel is okay because I know these can be horribly expensive so fingers crossed that that's, that's not fubbed and um, and it's usable and the rest of it is just a case of dismantling everything giving it a damn good clean up. Down there you can see the boiler. We've got what looks like a copper boiler of a good size, couple of litres maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's the Gaja has a, um, a boiler with something like a 200 milliliter capacity and this one uh, considerably different has a boiler with much bigness capacity as you can see um, but again of course that's that's due to it being a heat exchanger unit so you can see up there we've got the feed from the heat exchanger which comes up oh it helps if you point the camera where I'm pointing my finger feed from the heat exchanger coming up here into the group head assembly and then we've got the feed from the bottom up here into the group head assembly which is where the temperature mixes to get the correct brew temperature and then this is the feed for the hot water coming out of the top of the boiler and then the feed from the steam coming from here now the pipe obviously for this will go to the bottom of the boiler the pipe for this one will be at the top because this is where it's producing steam because the steam rises of course and then we've got various bits of plumbing and pipe work and a box of electricery down there and another bit of uh, electricery down there and uh, that I believe is where the gauge comes out yeah I think that's oh, that's actually just above the gauge so I'm not sure exactly what that is uh, let me try and focus on that for you so uh, apologies for the for the rubbish shaky cam footage um, but hopefully you can see enough to give you an idea of what's what down there at the bottom this bit right down there is the rotary pump unit a big big chunky um, lump of a rotary pump and down here if I can focus on that is the uh, well that's the pump motor rather down here is the actual pump itself and the plumbing the associated plumbing that goes with that so that's the water inlet and outlet feeds uh, that pump that pull the water in and push it out to the group head 
and a few more switches and wiring and what have you. So essentially this, this is filthy. It's disgusting, it's mouldy, it's, it's really, really unpleasant. Um, that, interestingly, looks like it might have a part number under that plate. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be the case. I want to take the side panels and the back panels and everything off so I can get to the frame and see and get a really good view of what's inside. Hopefully that might tell me the model number for part ordering and the picking of brains of people who've worked on these things, which I suspect I will have to do. So that's where we're at. That's a look around the Wager um, mystery unnamed single group machine. I hope you found this interesting, coffee fans, and please keep checking back for updates and hopefully I will um, I will find out a bit more information about this soon and start getting some uh, something in progress. So thank you for watching. Hi guys, brief addendum to this first video because this happened today before I had the chance to upload uh, to edit and upload the first video, but I I had the opportunity today to speak to a fella who was well versed in elastic trickery and he has informed me the reason the, uh, the mains cable looks like it does is because it is a three phase cable or it is designed to be wired into three phase wiring. Uh, had I actually looked at the label and taken a bit more notice of the label that's on the cable itself I would have seen this myself but to be fair um, the only thing I know about three phase elastic trickery is that um, it's got two phases more than one um, I'm not an electrician, as you might have guessed, so uh, I wouldn't have really known about that anyway, but by the by, I've, I've taken a few photos which I'm going to show him and he's going to have a look at the whole setup and advise me on the best way forward. If uh, I believe it can actually be wired for single phase, which is what your domestic homes are, which is why I found the, the cable a bit odd looking with five wires instead of just the three that you're used to. Um, I know I said I'm not an electrician, but I'm... I'm competent enough to, you know, to um, to fix loose wires, to wire up a plug and to do things like that. You know, it's just uh, as, as regards the, the technical aspects of, of big hefty wiring, I'm not that well versed in it. So, uh, so yeah, so that's that one. Uh, obviously, I mentioned earlier in the thing, I wasn't sure what, what the deal was with that. So at least I know that bit. And there was something else and I can't remember what it was. Oh yes, yeah, the ID plate. I have managed to locate a couple of ID plates and that's great news because it gives me a model number which means if I have a model number I will be able to locate parts for this model which is one of my big concerns was trying to find out what it was uh, I still don't know what it was what it is name wise but I do know that I now have a model number which means I will be able to source parts for it so that's great so uh, it's a good start um, all we need to do now is is get this wired up to power see if it works and I'll be doing a video on that as and when I do that once I've confirmed with uh, with Mr. Elastic Trickery on uh, on the recommended procedure. And once I know it switches on and it does does what it's supposed to do, at that point I can start ripping it apart in earnest and giving it a good clean up. And uh, and then as and when I'm able, order the spare element and uh, and check a few other components as i'm taking it apart because i'm probably going to have to replace a few seals and that kind of thing so there we go so join us for the next one thank you for watching